the first cut is always what hurts the most. So what I'm gonna do is go from about here to here and I'm not just gonna like stay in one spot and dig this stuff out. I'm just gonna make nice smooth motions going back and forth trying to evenly bring down this as flat as possible. I may not even try to get it all the way down to the very bottom of it because then it might be noticeable how much of the metal is missing. So all I'm looking for is improvements right here. I'm gonna start off on the lowest speed possible on the Dremel and then I'm just gonna kind of find, I'm gonna start working in here, kind of see how it reacts to it and then I'll adjust the speed from there. So the angle is also important too. You wanna make sure that you're angled right in to how it is. You don't wanna be flat and hit down here. And you also don't wanna be up too high and just removing all of this unnecessarily. So I kept that actually on the lowest speed the whole time and that cleaned up very quickly. Um, I'm not even gonna hit that with a 240 grit. I'm very happy with how that looks. I'm just gonna take some, um, some wax and grease remover, hit that one time and then we're gonna do some touch up paint on it. We're using this for wax and grease remover and then I'm using universal black touch up paint from Walmart. It actually matches these wheels pretty well. So we're just gonna get on this microfiber. Now I'm actually doing a very minimal amount of sanding on this in most scenarios you'd have to do a lot more but I'm actually really happy with how flat and everything that this is looking. I absolutely love the brush that comes with this in scenarios where I'm putting a lot of paint down. I do have like for my detailing I do have like a lot of teeny little touch up paint brushes that I would use if it was a lot smaller but what I'm going to do with this is make sure there's a lot on there. Wipe just a little bit of the excess off. And when I start applying this, I want to kind of get a good bit on there. I want enough on there to where it has the opportunity to self-level and start looking pretty decent. You don't obviously want to put so much on there though that it runs. So this first coat, you want it to be pretty heavy, but you're not going to be able to get all the way you're not gonna be able to get like full coverage to where you don't see the black anymore. See how it's about a drip right here? Be real careful of that. You wouldn't want that landing on like a perfectly fine spot on your wheel and then having to wipe the paint off and it smears and it's just not fun. So I'm just very gently painting this on. So it's already getting pretty dry. Um, I'm going to give this just another second and then I'm going to start putting on another layer of paint on top of it. Alright, so that's the second layer on there. We're going to let it dry and I'm going to go for just one more. Alright, it's been about 8 hours since the paint has been applied last so it's had some good time to cure. And now we're going to take some 3000 grit sandpaper and use this thin portion of the sanding disc. And we're going to just smooth it out a little bit to make it blend in with the original paint a little bit better. The trick to sanding successfully without having very deep sanding scratches get left behind is to use no force whatsoever, just enough to get the sandpaper on the surface flat and allow the sandpaper to do all of the work, not you pressing down or anything like that. Because if you do, you'll put in deeper scratches than what that sandpaper is actually rated for, so they may not come out with the next stage. Alright, so right now I'm using Meguiar's M110 
three inch white polishing pad on a uh, rotary and we're gonna try to just finesse this just enough until the sanding scratches are out I went very light on that because I just wanted to see how all these edges would react to the heat of the rotary and the sanding scratches are still deep in that clear coat however it did shine it up a good bit I'm gonna hit it one more time I'm gonna go a little bit slower and try to generate some more heat I'm sure that didn't do it, but I'm just trying to slowly but surely work this out. I'm not trying to just blow it out. I'm just trying to just barely remove these sanding scratches, but that's looking pretty awesome. Now if you spend more time with a Dremel getting the surface flat, you spend more time putting the paint on and try to get it smoother and maybe even paint it on with an aerosol can, um, you do more sanding, this will definitely come out better. But for me, this is more than good enough for this style of a repair. I just wanted it to be better than before and I don't want to spend so much time trying to get it perfect that it just this turns out to be a waste of time. So I'm happy with how that looks and I hope that I was able to help you guys out on how to do this for yourself.